Hello everyone and welcome to another incredible game uh, from the penultimate round of the FIDE World Rapid Championship. It is Norwegian Grandmaster Johan Sebastian Christiansen versus Russian Grandmaster Vladimir Burmakin. And if I just showed you, the, showed, you the, showed you the game and I didn't tell you who was playing it, but it was from the World Rapid Championship, you, you would say, okay, uh, probably Dubo is playing white. But nope, uh, the, uh, here is uh, uh, Johan Sebastian and he's trying to take away uh, Dubov's glory with his uh, crazy moves. So let's see what happened here truly an amazing game. Uh, Johann Sebastian has the white pieces and he opens with knight to f3. He starts off with the reti. We have d5 and now c4. Uh, 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 so, sort of a reti gambit but basically transposing into an English opening. We have c6, g3 and now knight to f6. We have bishop to g2, bishop to f5 and here we have castles. E6 now, uh, nicely closing the structure with the light square bishop already developed. C captures, C captures, sorry, not C captures, E captures on D5, and now pawn to D3. We have bishop to E7, knight to C3, and knight B to D7. Uh, and uh, this this uh, has all been uh, played before, but here we have E4, sort of a straight out pawn sacrifice, captures, captures, and now uh, there is a game where knight captures on E4 was played. Georg Meyer is the one who originally uh, played this E4 idea in 2019 against Alexei Reshetnikov and uh uh, he was able to win that game, but here we don't have a capture on e4, we have bishop to g4, pinning that knight, and it is now, as of move 10, that we have a completely new game. So let's see uh, what um, Johann Sebastian prepared for this. Pawn to e5, uh, and okay, now how do you claim this pawn? You will capture on f3, it is definitely the best move, captures, captures, and now just knight captures on e5. So okay, black grabbed the pawn, and now it's time to prove that you can keep that pawn. Queen to e2, now attacks the knight, knight back to g6, and now f4. Okay, white is getting uh, some attacking moves in, but nothing too spectacular. We have castles, and now pawn to f5. And this is, if this was a classical game, of course, white would not play this, but here, white should... Uh, uh, black should take a moment and try to refute this idea and uh, in the game uh, this this did not happen here uh, Vladimir should have played rook to e8 it comes with the threat of bishop c5 check just winning the white queen so you have to play king to h1 and then bishop to f8 again attacks the queen and wins the e5 square for the knight and only once the queen moves you move the knight to the e5 and black is just better here however as this is rapid bishop to c5 check was played seems like you're doing the same thing only via a different move order the problem is after king to h1 now you no longer have rook e8 if you play rook e8 now then just queen to c4 attacks the bishop and also the knight is hanging so black just resigns here black will lose a piece so uh knight to e7 had to be played and now look at this pawn to g4 uh, white uh, a white attack is happening and it should not even exist. We have knight e to d5 now and now pawn to g5. Uh, and okay, uh, since white decided to go for an all-out attack, uh, it is very principled to remove as many pieces from the board from, from black's perspective. So knight captures on c3, uh, that knight might also be a valuable attacker at some point. And also you clear the d5 square for your other knight that is attacked on f6. So b captures on c3 and now knight to d5. And here just c4 chasing away that knight from uh, from uh, uh, even just the vicinity of the black king. We have knight to b4, and here again, uh, if uh, black had a moment to, uh, to check out what, what was happening, bishop to d4 is just great for black. Attacks the rook, and the white would have to continue the attack with c captures on d5 and give up the exchange, because if you tried to save the rook, then knight to c3 now uh, wins the, the game for black. So uh, knight to b4 was played, and now comes bishop to b2, uh, putting pressure on this long diagonal and now uh, uh, here uh, the g5 pawn is hanging but do you really want to capture this g pawn if you don't capture it then queen to h5 comes on the next move and all this pressure going towards the black king will be very hard to parry so queen captures on g5 was played and okay it seems like you cannot play rook to g1 because the bishop covers that square but uh, n n that never stopped an attacker from attacking so <laughs> rook to g1 uh, and just queen to h6 black does not want to capture this rook until he absolutely needs to and uh, well, you have to move the queen off of this diagonal because once the, bish the light square bishop moves, uh, there will be trouble. So queen to h6, pretty much the only square you have left. And now comes bishop to d5, the move from the thumbnail. I will just show you a fun line uh, that starts with bishop captures and g7. Well, this is possible. Uh, it is also possible to defend this for black. Now king captures and g7, queen to e5 check. Now f6 and queen captures and c5. Looks pretty good. Attacks the knight. Let's say knight to a6, a6 six but now queen 
going to e7 check you cannot play rook to f7 because once the bishop moves you will lose that rook on f7 so you have to move the king now you're going to capture here attack the knight and once the knight attacks the queen you're going to capture on c6 and uh white definitely uh, has enough uh for 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 compensation white is up a pawn and uh uh, okay, it's not uh, too much. Maybe knight d3 going after a smothered mate here. So white will have to defend this knight e5. And okay, th this maybe w would be the resulting position as it's pretty much all forced. But not too much for white here. Uh, he does have a passed c pawn. Uh, whether he would be able to, you know, nurture that to, to a queen, uh, we would have to see. But here, bishop to d5 instead. And this is much, much trickier uh, as it allows black to just completely blunder the game away as it happened uh, in the game. So here, okay, now you have have to capture on g1 uh even if you don't calculate anything you just uh, think to yourself okay if i survive the attack i'm just going to be out material so bishop captures on g1 rook captures on g1 and this is where it happens now just in case you're wondering g6 is not a possibility just queen e5 and you cannot prevent checkmate you cannot uh, advance the f pawn the f pawn is pinned so this is just game over so instead after rook captures on g1 we have c captures on d5 and we're going to return to this position once i show you the actual game but c captures on d5 is the move that uh, completely blunders the game away for black but it's not easy to see why there's only one move that wins the game for white so feel free to pause the video and win the game for Johan Sebastian uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting this absolute brilliancy. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, it is queen to h5. We are, of course, going to do it in super slow motion uh, as the queen cannot be accepted. The problem is uh, if you capture here, then look at this. Rook captures on g7, check. King h8, now rook captures on f7 with check. This is a very important uh, part of your plan as you want to eliminate the f pawn so uh, black cannot use it in the future to block check with pawn to f6 so now you have only one option king to g8 okay you can even uh give up the d4 pawn first doesn't really change anything uh king to g8 now again rook to g7 check king to h8 and now rook to g6 with check uh leaving black without any squares for the king and you've eliminated the df7 pawn so black cannot block this check with so you're gonna have to give up the pawn and then give up the rook and this is just checkmate uh, so uh, unfortunately for uh, for Vladimir, uh, it is impossible to capture this queen. So, th but there is no way to uh, actually avoid losing the queen uh, because if you move the queen somewhere weird, just rook captures on g7 check and queen captures on h7 will be checkmate. So he played key a queen to g6, sort of a way to prolong the game a little bit. But it'd be it'd be way nicer if he just resigned here and then we could have this as the final position. But okay, he played a few more moves. Queen to g6, uh, the queen is captured. H captures on g6 and now queen to e5 threatening checkmate here f6 we have queen to e6 check rook to f7 and here just rook captures on g6 and he was in this position on move 29 that vladimir burmakin resigned the game uh, as there is nothing more to be done here uh now uh, the the g pawn is pinned the rook is pinned bishop captures on f6 is coming uh you cannot um, uh, unpin here with the king if, if you move the king to f8 then, then just queen to d6 check will pick up the knight here you cannot move the king to the h file because because this rook will hang so there really isn't uh, all that much uh, you can do here if rook to f8 you can even play bishop to a3 also very nice i mean so many moves here the the this pawn is marching up the board uh, the, 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 uh, it's completely unplayable so uh big big game by, by johan sebastian it's a bit uh, it's okay it's not maybe up to dubov standards as dubov's win against the giri uh, i mean giri is a much much stronger opponent and he did uh, do it with the black pieces uh, but in terms of uh, of beauty and in terms of style, uh, definitely, uh, you know, a uh, 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 worthy game uh, of your time, beautiful, beautiful attacking game. And I would just like to return to that moment where I said that we are going to return to it here, where C captures on D5 was played, uh, grabbing that bishop. Uh, if black played knight captures on D5, it would be completely different because now, even though queen to H5 can still be played or even must if white wants to continue uh with something then uh there is no checkmate queen captures on h5 and now the same idea no longer works rook captures on g7 king h8 rook captures on f7 with check king to g8 rook g7 check king h8 and now some rook to, so now you have to play rook to f7 check and go for a repetition because if you try the same idea uh now it's not checkmate because knight can block with knight to f6 and now white is just down too much material white will have to resign uh so yeah uh very very nice stuff and uh, okay for a class 
Pascal, maybe you wouldn't be able to pull this off, but for a rapid game, uh, definitely uh, uh, <laughs> a be beautiful attacking game with, with many pawns gambited and many, many tricky ideas. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Uh, we've already reached the final round of the uh, FIDE World Rapid Championship where uh, the tournament is being led by Magnus Cross and Vladislav Artemiev uh, and Vincent Keimer and we'll see what happens uh, in the final round who will be crowned the World Rapid Champion 2022. But until then, hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you in the next video. Uh, and also, uh, I would like to thank uh, Jeff Graves, David Rock, uh, Rice Oxley, Kevin Clark, Chris Mullen and Rapid Boss for your contribution to my channel. Thank you lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon continuing to check up uh, on the FIDE World Rapid Championship uh, until it finishes. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.